Well, hey there, everybody. It's 3 p.m. and it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. How are you? How was your Thanksgiving? You've got to type it in the chat. Tell me how it was. Just tell me how everything was going for your holiday. Ours was absolutely fantastic. Hey, Frank Sully. Um, it was beautiful on the water. I miss that ocean view, that sunset that goes down on that West Coast. It was breathtakingly absolutely beautiful we had so much fun and uh, we had an absolutely delicious dinner hey joanne hope you had a good thanksgiving as well so there's so much to talk to you about but here is the god's honest truth let me tell you today i said to myself i absolutely cannot cook today i am so exhausted the only feel, thing I feel like doing today is juicing. And as you know, we're transitioning all these videos from the last year that I have done live with all of you on Facebook over to YouTube. And I had to get 25 of them ready to get, to get uploaded when I got home over the weekend. And it gave me the opportunity to actually be watching some of the old videos. And it just, it turns out that the next 25 that I was uploading was from this time of year, hi Mark, was this time of year last year. And what one of the videos said is that we believe, and I haven't said this in so long, and I wanted to say it again. We believe in this household that there is a time to feast and a time to fast. And it's our jobs to know the difference. You know, our ancestors, did not drive by a fast food restaurant every 20 feet or 20 different ice cream stores or a bunch of hamburger and French fry joints back in the caveman days. They learned and they fasted on, you know, what was hand gathered and grown during certain times of year. And then when someone caught an animal, they feasted, right? And so our bodies are really set up for that uh, intermittent small eating, and then when a big kill comes, we're there, or a big celebration, we're there to feast. And so what I talked about in this one video that I thought was really interesting, I got inspired by one little something that I said, which is that you, we need to give ourselves a runway before a big feast is coming that we know about. And certainly there's no bigger feast during the year than Thanksgiving why we all equate being um, full 10, like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being Thanksgiving full. Why we use that analogy, I don't know. Pardon me, my nose was itching. Um, and, uh, but we do. And so when we are going, hey, Randy Marvin, nice to see you. When we go for a big feast, we need to give ourselves a runway to prepare for it. And by that, I mean, that you need to, to little by little by little lean yourself off of anything heavy for three to five days prior to that meal. Now you're going to say, oh, but then what happens is my stomach shrinks and it's harder to eat such a big meal. And the answer is, yes, this is true. And in a way, that's what you want. You want to feel a little more shrunk down. You want your stomach to feel a little bit less capable of actually eating um, you know, to a, a 10 and that 10, Hey, Cynthia, that 10 comes much quicker when you've used that runway. Now, when you're done with Thanksgiving and then you're done with the, you know, leftovers, which I love, thank you, raise your hand, honestly, type a one in the chat. Happy Hanukkah to you too, Cynthia. Type a one in the chat if you love leftovers more than you actually love Thanksgiving. I mean, we had leftovers the next day. It was amazing. Also, I want to tell you, I forgot to put the cranberry sauce out. I was devastated. So on day two, leftover day, we put out the cranberry sauce. And oh, my God, like it was beyond belief. So Frank likes leftovers more than he likes the real dinner. Anybody else type in a one that that's what you like? So when it's all over and after you do the second day of leftovers, then the next day there's less to eat. And you literally need to give yourself a runway to come back off of all of that food, that food that you love, but that you really only eat one or two times a year. So your body's not conditioned to it, you know, and, and this is the only time in history where people 
eat by different philosophies as opposed to what is available to them because we live in such a global universe of trade and FedEx, et cetera. Hey, food, you're Peter Guzman. Uh, and so people just eat more or they eat more of what they love on um, bigger quantities than they were ever able to do before because food was not as abundant. I mean, it was always abundant from the earth, but it wasn't on every street corner. It wasn't, you know, uh, every 20 feet as you drove another, you know, uh, stuffing and turkey and everything. And Cynthia says we ate somewhere else. So we had no leftovers. I just got back from the market and bought a fresh 13 pound turkey. So there she goes. She is actually going to do it to herself now. Um, I'm roasting it tomorrow so that Stephen will have leftovers. Now that's a wife. That is a wonderful wife. I love that. So let me tell you, I have to pull something out of the oven right this minute. I don't want to show you what it is because I left it as just sort of a mystery as to what I was going to be talking about today. Because as I start out telling you, I absolutely was not going to cook today. The truth is, I was not. And then I went to the grocery store to get these items over here that I was going to uh, juice. And I saw something that I was hoping I would find before Thanksgiving. So stand by. Stand by. I'm going to pull this out of the oven. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Ugh. Sorry, I can't find a place to set it down. I'll just put it right there. Okay. So I'll pull that over in just a moment to show you. Let's see. Good women are hard to find. Yes, they are. And Symphony is definitely one, and she is taken. Okay. So, so my juicing is a carrot. So I'm going to do this. Out. I was going to do it for you. So I went to the grocery store, got inspired, and then I couldn't not cook this with all of you. So here's the carrots, one carrot, a half a grapefruit, a half a lemon. Hey there, Tony Lemley. Nice to see you. Love a mystery. Good. I'm so glad. If you love a mystery, then you have to show up on Wednesday live in Gather with Nanny Bubby Facebook group for the three secrets to the best holiday gathering in history. Three secrets to that. A lemon, romaine, a cucumber, ginger, and turmeric. And that's my juice. And so when all this is over, and when I show you what I'm actually doing today, when it comes dinner time today, my dinner is actually going to be the juicing. And I feel so much better. I really like I it just that runway to get to Thanksgiving did not happen for us because it was Harmony's birthday and we had a huge feast just days before we were feasting again. It was just a little much. So usually her birthday falls about a week to, to um, eight days before Thanksgiving. But this year, you know, as Thanksgiving falls, uh, it was way too close to her birthday. So. There was no runway up for us, but there's definitely a runway down. So I'm taking advantage of that. All right. So let me show you what we are doing today. Ready? I was looking for these. Look at this. This is Brussels sprouts on a stock. I did see these at Trader Joe's a couple days before we were getting ready to leave on Thanksgiving. So I think I saw them on Sunday at Trader Joe's and I was afraid to buy them because I didn't think that they would be fresh by Thursday. So I figured, you know, I'm going to buy them when I get to the Whole Foods in Del Mar because I'd ordered my turkey at the Whole Foods in Del Mar. Well, it took us nine and a half hours to get across the desert on Tuesday. <gasps> what did I say? Oh, there's Biggie saying hello. I think even Biggie exclaimed, what? Nine and a half hours? Yes. Nine and a half hours to get across that desert. And I ordered turkey at the Del, uh, Del Mar Whole Foods, which was the closest Whole Foods to where we were staying. Well, we had to get into that. You know, I think they probably are. I mean, I think anything grown, Frank, is edible, but we'll get back to that. We went into that Whole Foods, and let me tell you, it was a zoo. First of all, it was Southern California. So that means, you know, this is not Las Vegas, which is busy as it is anyway on a Tuesday before Thanksgiving, right? But this was Southern California and the only Whole Foods for miles and miles and miles away. And we walked in. You, first of all, you couldn't find a parking space. 
which I mean, I think we would have given up, but I had ordered a turkey. And so I absolutely had to go in and I had to schlep in Tom and Russell and my mother-in-law. Um, and so I was praying that I would find the Brussels sprout stalks. And at the end of the day, there actually wasn't even any Brussels sprouts there. We had to go the next morning to a little grocery store in the neighborhood where we were staying. So it all worked out okay. But when I walked into Whole Foods to get my juicing, to show you how to juice a carrot today, because that was about all I was feeling like I wanted to do, I found these stocks. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to serve it. And I think when I, I wanted to do this last Christmas, and about four days before Christmas, Whole Foods had them. And I thought, well, I'll wait till, you know, right before Christmas Eve, and I'll get them then. And do you know, they never got them in again. And so I've waited a whole year to actually do this with you. And I, so I'm really pumped when I walked in and saw them. So let me show you what we're going to do here. Did I cut? Oh, wait. Before I do anything else, I just want to say a big thank you to um, Lene. So some of you out there that are there right now, would you put at Lene Hoge for me in the chat? So because she's not here right now, and I just wanted her to know that we were talking about this. So can you guys do that for me? Anybody who's here watching, uh, type at Lene, L-Y-N-E, L-Y-N-N-E, it's apostrophe, H-O-G-E. She should pop up right there just so that she sees that we're mentioning her in this um, live today. So Lene makes popcorn. And she sent me these beautiful popcorn, um, well, they're not balls, but it, I love what she filled them in, these sort of hanging ornaments, actually. You could hang these on your tree, couldn't you? And um, the card says, so very thankful for you. Happy Thanksgiving, which was so sweet. And this is um, homemade caramel corn with a hint of cayenne. So we took a couple of these down to the beach with us. They were fantastic. This one is missing. Um, well, let's see. This, this one is, and the rest of them are homemade caramel corn with nuts. So there's some with nuts, some without nuts. They're just absolutely fantastic. And then what else? So has anybody typed out an A? Can anybody find it? Let me let me see. I can't do it from here. Um, I can't type uh, until afterwards. So Anybody, anybody out there, anybody out there in the universe can type Lene for me? At Lene Hoach, let's see. At, well, no, it's, you have to find her name and um, pin it. So, Cynthia, can you see it? Are you there? <laughs> okay. All right. So, maybe you have to be friends with her to tag her. I don't know, but I'll tag her afterwards. Okay. So, she also sent me uh, the cheese board deck, which I thought was absolutely amazing. So on the back, it says, build your own board. And here's the cards. Hey, Sue Plattner, happy to have you here. It's Lene, L-Y-N-N-E apostrophe, Hoge, H-O-G-E. And I think she's got a middle or her maiden name. So it's Lene something Hoge, I think. Um, anyway, so here's what you do. You take out your deck of cards right here like this. And let's see. And it's very much like the vegetable uh, cards that we were looking at. Um, this tells you a little bit about it. And each one of these has a different charcuterie board on it. So um, let's see. All different kinds. So here's holidays and seasonal. Let's see. Here's light and wholesome. Oop. Let me... I need to cut the deck, right? So here's light and wholesome. Hey, Tammy, nice to see you. Tammy Marvin is here. There's another Marvin that is here, Tammy. Are you related to him? I think it's Randy Marvin, isn't it? Okay, and here's holidays and seasonals. So latkes, build your own latka. Oh my God, how fun would that be? Build your own latka charcuterie board. I should look at that. For those of you who celebrate Hanukkah, all of you will, front, will wonder, so... Um, Applesauce, sour cream, potato chips, uh, oven-ready latkes, multicolored potato chips, um, caviar, salmon, egg whites, egg yolks, chives, cucumber, apples. And then what you do, here you go. There's a picture of them. I am definitely making this for Hanukkah. How do you guys like that? Isn't that amazing? That is, or here's trick or sweet, which is uh, Halloween. Stars and Stripes for 
July 4th. Look how cute that is. And hop into spring. How cute. Shamrock snack. <laughs> Charcuterie tree. I made that last year on Channel 8, if you guys remember. Friendsgiving. There we go. Here's Galentine's Day. Cute. Look at that charcuterie board. Isn't that awesome? So I really appreciated that. So it's so funny because she gave me this deck of cards, which I'm definitely going to use for, um, for Hanukkah because I'm going to have a bunch of little kids here for Hanukkah and latkes uh, for the adults as well. So I'll put that on a charcuterie board. But um, I also received a gift, if you may remember, from Lucy and Sulaco. So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this stock, with this Brussels sprout stock. And then I'm going to tell, hey, vet. And then I'm going to tell you that we are absolutely going to put it and serve it on this particular charcuterie board that I received from Lucy. So if you're ready, here we go. Let's get started here. Let's get cooking, right? So I have already washed uh, this with the um, uh, hydrogen peroxide, food grade, food grade hydrogen peroxide. And then I'm going to take my kitchen scissors. And if you can see, there's little ends here that need to be cut off. So here we go. Cutting all that off. These, these are like large, larger stocks that look like they just, I don't know, maybe at some point they did have um, actual, you know, the Brussels on them. But so let's roll that over. There's another long one right there. If you can see that, let's cut that off and then not worry about the rest of it. Now, any brown leaves that are exposed, we're going to want to take those off. So here's some ugly looking leaves that aren't do not look so appetizing so we're just going to grab those off now normally i would make this with minced garlic and olive oil but as it so happens and because i do not feel like mincing anything right now right like to get out a knife and a cutting board is not something i'm looking forward to i can tell you that but what I do have is I have the roasted garlic olive oil by Temecula olive oil. And then I have this hickory smoked olive oil. And I'm combining those for both a little bit of a smoke flavor and a little bit of a garlic flavor. And I have um, put them in here. And what I've added into this, because you can see how red it is, I probably should have put that in a lighter bowl so that you could see. But I put in with both those oils, the red chili pepper, the sweet paprika, and the kosher salt. There you go. So the first thing that I'm going to do just to get into the edges so that they don't burn is I'm going to take some avocado oil and I'm just going to spray the stock with it, spray in between so that nothing starts to burn in there. We'll turn it over. Now, you might notice that the stock, oh, my God, I love this so much. It's made me so excited. I went into that, whoops, I'll leave it. I went into that Whole Foods saying, I am not getting anything but carrots to juice today for the show. And then look what happened to me. I got all excited and all inspired. Now, please notice this one thing. Notice, if you will, Teresa, how are you? Nice to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody looked like they had such a beautiful, beautiful day. I love Teresa's walk on Thanksgiving Day. So look at how, if you can see this, that this actually goes over the top of the sheet pan. This is a half sheet pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these ends off and put them on the sheet pan, right? Maybe one more. Oops. And there's, there's another one just kind of way down here. Let's cut that off. There we go. Okay, on there. And then what I'm going to do is take a knife. I knew I said I wasn't going to grab a knife, but let me grab a knife. Oh. 
and let's cut this off, which I cannot do. Hmm. I think I need to saw it off. So let me get a serrated knife over here and see what I can do to get this off so that it fits. Boy, this stock is really, really, really um, hard for sure. And I don't want to lose a finger here, so let's get this off. Well, listen, I can't cut it. That's the that's the bottom line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this like this, and I'm going to just let that stock hang over the edge as I put it in the oven because I just don't think that that can hurt anything. So it's not going to droop off. It's not going to fall. It's not going to ruin the oven. I'm not going to lose the, the real stuff is the sprouts, but... I think that the right thing to do is just leave that so I don't lose a hand here live on Facebook. So, okay, so I'm going to take this pastry brush. And again, this is the garlic olive oil, the hickory smoked olive oil, red chili pepper, kosher salt, and sweet paprika. And I'm just going to brush it. Let me tip you down so you can see. Here we go. Use an ax. I know, literally, I need an ax, Frank. Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. So I keep, I keep, um, get inside and I keep putting the pastry brush inside the, and moving it around so that the salt and everything that seep down to the bottom will come back up. So I want to get, you know, the stock in between everything. And we'll roll this over. There we go. Can you imagine? So I'm juicing tonight and I'm eating Brussels sprouts. Don't you love this? So I, ha I put one in the oven before you got here. And I just took it out as you saw me so that it wouldn't burn because it was in there quite a while before you got here because I could hardly wait to put it up when I got home. I was so excited. Here we go. And now I'm going to take this and I am going to put it into the oven. So into the oven for about 40 minutes on 375 degrees or depending on, you know, how hot your oven is. Hey there, Susie. I see you today. Okay. So there we go. Hold on just a minute. So let me turn you. I don't know if I actually am turning anybody here. Let me see. And yep, you can see me, right? So we'll put this right into the oven. There we go. And even with the stock sticking out, it fits. Now, I will turn it halfway through its cooking. So at about 20, 25 minutes, I will go and I will turn it. Hey, Marty Greenwood, how are you? Nice to see you. And uh, Susie says hi to Frank. So everybody's finding each other. Okay. So let me, um, let me show you what the other one looks like. And there it is. Can you guys see that? Look at how beautiful roasted it is. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left out, leftover oil. Again, it was the hickory smoked olive oil. Yep. And the roasted garlic olive oil. And um, red chili pepper, kosher salt, sweet paprika. I'm just going to lightly brush all of this one more time with all of that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, my God. Now, the way that I was planning on serving this for Thanksgiving had I found it for Thanksgiving. But I didn't. But I'm hoping that I can find it for um, Christmas night. I really am. So... Here is, there we go. Okay, so again, Lucy made me this gorgeous charcuterie board, right? And I thought, I don't have a platter big enough for this. 
how am I going to serve this? So let me show you how I plan to do it. I'm going to take this charcuterie board. I mean, maybe I could put a piece of parchment down on it. Oh my gosh, let me move all of this just slightly away. There we go. And I'm going to take it and simply lift it right onto the board. Look at that. Does that look gorgeous or does that look gorgeous? Here's the spares that I cut off. Here's a little long stalk. Look at that. And mmm, mmm, that is amazing. And I'll tell you the one thing that it could use. Mmm, as I talk with my mouth full, but. This is a Malden smoked sea salt, and it's a finishing salt, and so and it's smoked, and so it's going to complement the fabulous. Oh my gosh! It's going to comp, and it's smoked. It's smoked sea salt. Isn't that fabulous? There we go. So I'm going to taste one more, and let you know how it is. But what I would do is I would serve this on the beautiful charcuterie board. Thank you, Lucy and Salako. Let me show it to you so you can see the full thing. Can you see that? Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Let's see. Let me move this so you can see. And I would put a fork on this end and a fork on this end, lay this in the middle of the table, and then everybody can pull off however many Brussels sprouts they want and eat them. How fabulous is that? Isn't that gorgeous? And there you have it. I'm so excited. Garlic, yep, I did put garlic in it. Garlic olive oil, yes, Mark. That's exactly what I did. If I did not have garlic flavored olive oil, then I would have minced up garlic and I would have put it into the um, I would have put it into the the olive oil and then brushed it with that. And it could actually it could have used a little more garlic, a little more garlicky taste. But it is what it is. I could lie to you and tell you it was perfect, but it's not. Could have used a little bit more garlic. So I think even with the garlic olive oil, a couple minced cloves would have been absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Yes, awesome presentation. Thank you to Lucy and Salako for my first charcuterie board over here. And I'm going to taste it with the Malden sea salt for you. Ready? Mmm. Okay, that was fantastic. So delicious. Mm. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Fernando, my produce manager over at our Whole Foods, and find a way to get him to order me two beautiful Brussels sprout stalks and have them set aside for me for Christmas in some way. Because last year when I went to do this, they were gone, gone, gone. So this looks amazing, right? So that's it. How many of you, um, oh, Verica is here. Uh, you want a bite? I know. I want to give you a bite, Verica. Here you guys go. Look at that. Roasted, beautiful, perfect, brown, but not burnt. They're absolutely wonderful. So, okay. So let me just say, how many of you raise your hand or go over to Gather with Nanny Bubby and register to come to the master class where I'm giving you three secrets to the best holiday gathering ever. Frankly, you know me, I do everything to excess. So I actually finish my script and realize that I'm doing six secrets, but nonetheless, I'm happy to do it. Yay. And um, so go over to Gather with Nanny Bubby and register for Wednesday, 2 p.m. I'll be live in Gather with Nanny Bubby, and then I'll come over here after I'm done. And that's that. So thank you to Lene Renda Hoge. If anybody finds her, I'll, I'll tag her right when we're done for this charcuterie board. Outstanding idea. I love it. And that's it for me. That's it for me. Thank you all for joining me. I wish you a happy week. I'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here Wednesday. I'll be here Thursday and I'll be here Friday. And can you imagine not until an hour before I was about to come did I realize that I was going to do these Brussels sprouts because I, when I tell you, I was honestly 
honestly just going to show you how to juice a um a carrot i really meant it <laughs> i really was just going to talk about juicing because i got inspired by what i had said in an old video but i saw this instead probably better huh that's it yes thank you tony spread love like better butter better better butter on the count of three one two three go out and spread love like butter bye everybody